you. Thank you, Pastor Jeff. So Pastor Jeff is excited. I don't know my heart if it's excited too. Okay. So good morning. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So uh, today we are going to continue the, uh, the study in Genesis. But before that, of course, I have my gadgets here with me. I have my water, my glasses, my cell phone. You know, I'm 40 plus tax years old. So I need a lot of uh, gadgets here. Okay. So um, many Sundays ago, we had a privilege to have uh, Pastor Rio Veltica. If you remember him, right? He's, he's, he's uh, one of the madrigal singer. He's very good in singing. So today, um, uh, remember him when he called uh, his wife before he started preaching? They sang, they offered the song to the Lord, right? <laughs> you like that, right? Because it's for the Lord. So I was thinking, that sounds like a good idea, right? But I don't think Pastor Jeff and Sister Jem is ready, right? Why? What are you thinking? Huh? I'm not the pastor. Pastor Jeff was the pastor. It's the pastor, right? Well, are, are you ready, Pastor Jeff, to sing a song for us? No, no, no. No? no? <laughs> yeah, so, so, yeah. So they are not ready maybe next, next week, right? Uh-huh. All right. So uh, just like um, uh, just what I said earlier, we are going to continue with our study in Genesis, the beginnings. And if you don't know where to find Genesis in the Bible, it's the easiest one, right? It's the first book of the Bible in the Old Testament. So today we are going to continue and study two parts. But don't worry, I made it so short so we can tackle both of them. Genesis chapter 10 and 11. Last week, Pastor Jeff uh, 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 teaching was from uh, 8 and 9, right? 8 and 9. And uh, today, uh, I'm not going to tell you the summary because you can watch it on our uh, Facebook page, right? We have our page that you can watch it again and again. Amen. Thank you for the technology. Thank you, Lord. So before we start, um, let us pray. Almighty Father, Lord, we thank you for uh, this time, O oh God, as we study your word, O oh Lord. Lord, Holy Spirit, help us to understand what you want us to know today. That this message will give you glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So our title for today is this. Can you see it? Okay. The beginning of confusion. It's a heavy word. My first question for today is, uh, who among you here is confused? You can raise up your hand if you want. Oh, James is confused right now. And my son, Miko. Yeah. So what makes you confused? There's a lot of things, right? The media, some videos on YouTube makes people confused. A lot of things from politics, genders, a lot of things. Belief, people are being confused by the world. But um, the thing is, confusion comes in all ages. Young person like me get confused. Old people like... Old people get confused too, right? <laughs> oh, no. I, I might get in trouble when I say names, okay? <laughs> so, so, but the world... And some pharmacology, a pharmacist, um, pharmaceutical company made some things for us. Vitamins and minerals, right? It, they make vitamins and minerals to, to make us sharper, right? And to lessen our forgetfulness. And there's a lot of people, even me, sometimes I forget a lot of things. And uh, maybe some of you too, right? Even the young, young kids, they forget things too. They forget to wash the plates. They forget to wash the dishes, right? Sweep the floor. Yeah, all of us forget things, right? But uh, don't worry, I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, kids, 
and old ones too. So, um, one good uh, one good example for forgetfulness or being confused is a movie, right? I don't know if you know this movie. If you watch this movie, it's about this Finding Dory. Did you, did you watch this movie? This this fish is always confused. Sometimes she forgot that um, Dory is a, 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 a lady fish, right? Dory, she, eh? right? <laughs> so, so Dory, sometimes she, she forget that Nemo is her friend, right? So it's funny. This, this movie is really funny. But it's a good example of confusion. And I'm sure a lot of you can relate. Very good movie. I, I encourage you to watch it again with your family. So... Today, we are going to talk about Genesis chapter 10 and 11. Gen uh, Genesis chapter 10 talks about genealogy. So this is the part of the Bible that is um, very hard to memorize. I don't know if some of you uh, memorize the genealogy of Jesus Christ or the genealogy of Noah. It's really, even your own genealogy is so hard to memorize, right? Sometimes you have to dig so deep so that you will know your ancestors. But first, let's define what's genealogy. Genealogy is a noun. Not me. It's, it's the book that I read. The definition of genealogy is the line of ancestors from whom a person is descended. In layman's term, it is simply called family tree. So it's easier to, for us to, to know, right? Because of genealogy, we will be able to trace our ancestors. And it's also a proof that a person really exists or existed. Right? One very interesting genealogy is found in Matthew chapter 1. The genealogy of Jesus Christ. Now, as a trivia, I'm going to show you my genealogy. So, here it is. Okay. So between 1910, between 1910 and 19, to 1915, my grandparents were born. From my father's side, who is from Sursogon, from Bicol, so from two of them, my, my grandfather and grandmother, they, are, they have nine children from 1930 to 1955. Then the, their children had Kids, grandkids, that's us, my generation, from 1965 to 1985. I am not the 1985, so somewhere lower there. So, okay, there are 19 grandkids. And 1985 to 2009, we, the cousins, my sisters, we had 40 great grandkids, right, from my, my, my grandparents. 2009, because that's Juliana's birth year. So Juliana is the youngest. Okay. Now, from my mother's side, who is from Iloilo, uh, my mom is watching right now, so from, from Capis. So, from, yeah, from, from two people, my grandpa, my grandma, they had eight children from 1930 to 1960. They had grandkids, us, from 1960 to 1985, 31 grandkids. And great grandkids of my grandparents from 1985 to 2009, 35 grandkids. And again, it's Juliana is the youngest, I think. I think. So what I want to show you is this. In a span of 99 years, from 1910 to 2009, there are a total of 156 people directly from my bloodline. And if I include all the in-laws, our line may be close to 300 people. In a span of 99, 99 uh, years, that's including my wife, if I include them uh, in that um, bloodline. So this is how fast people populate the earth. So this is just me. I don't know about you, I'm, I'm sure. Um, that is why the theory that man coming from ape is not true. Right? It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Right? 
people came from people. Amen? So we can see, because only 99 years, there's already 300 people there. That's only my bloodline, so I don't know about yours. Millions, right? And I thank God that my grandparent obeyed to populate and multiply the earth. Just like what God said to populate earth. Amen? In Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. That's why I encourage uh, the I encourage everyone to make their own genealogy because it's fun. It's really it's really fun to to make one. Imagine uh, you, the older people you will say, oh my grandparents were born in the 1800s, right? So I'm not saying there's old people here. Nobody, right? It's just a number. So but but it's fun. It's really it's really good to to know your uh, your family tree. And actually, even Facebook has a semi family tree, right? And they call it mutual friend. You see, like it's like a family tree. You can say, oh, oh, she's my friend. This is your friend, 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 right? They have this this uh, mutual friend. In Genesis chapter 10, verse 1 to 32, it talks about the genealogy of Noah after the flood. So Noah, and he has three sons, ja Japheth, Ham, and Shem. Scholars and theologians call this the table of nations. It talks about the new population of earth after the flood. And the three sons of Noah, Ham, Shem, and Jap Japheth. And in case, uh, sorry for the non-Filipino, uh, and in case you are wondering, right, the Filipino origin, I have good news for you. You also came from one of the sons of Noah, right? And, and of course, uh, our non-Filipino line. Uh, according to scholars, um, we came from the line of Japheth. Japheth. But we are not going to talk about it here today. It will be the homework of the dads. I encourage the father here to research it and uh, talk about it in your, with, with, your, your, with your family, your family time. See? So they said that Japheth is the father of the Asian people. Ham is the father of the African people. And Shem, the Middle Eastern and the white people. So I, when, when I was uh, doing my research, when I was doing this, it went to my mind and I laugh about it because I'm, 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 I'm sure this is not true, right? But I've been just playing in my mind. I don't know, maybe when they were kids, maybe these three are talking to each other, teasing each other. Maybe Ham said, Dad, how come Shem's color is this? It's different from me. And then Shem said, yeah, Dad, how about Ham's color is way different from me? And then both of them, Ham and Shem, Dad, how about Japhet? He looks weird. Looks like Filipino. No, just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. So no, no, no. It's it's just it played in my mind, but it's not really. It's not true. Okay. So in Genesis chapter ten, verse one to seven, let's start with our uh, um, um, uh, verses. So it says, uh, I think it's too small, right? Let me read to you. Uh, These are the generations of the sons of Noah. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Sons were born to them after the flood. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshech, and Tiras. The sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, Rifat, and Togoma. The son of Javan, Elisha, Tarshish, Kitim, and Dodanim. From this, the coastland people spread in the lands each with his own language by their own clans in their nations. The sons of Ham, Cush, Egypt, Put, and Canaan. The sons of Cush, Siba, Havila, Sabta, Rayama, and Sabtika. The sons of Rama, Sheba, and Vidan. So, these are the first genealogy that we read um, in this chapter. And chapter 10, 
verse 8 to 12. Now, this is a big one. Now, Cush became the father of Nimrod. He became a mighty one on earth. A mighty one on earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Therefore, it is said, like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before the Lord, the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, or Babel, and Erech, and Akkad, and Kalne, in the land of Shinar. From that land, he went, from, went forth in Assyria, and built Nineveh, and Rehobit, Ir, and Kala, and Resen, between Nineveh and Kala, that is the great city. You know, now Nimrod plays a big part in the history of the world. And if you, if you see this, this in, in verse 10, the beginning of his kingdom. This is the very first time in the Bible that an early kingdom was mentioned. The kingdom of Nimrod. Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. He also built eight cities. Babylon, Uruk, Aklad, Kalne, Nineveh, Rehoboth, Ir, Kala, and Resen. Now, Nimrod, Nimrod, the rebel son of Cush, was described as a mighty hunter before the Lord. It means only one thing, though the Bible didn't really uh, specifically mention what he hunts, but historians believe that he hunts men, right? He hunts animals and men as well. And for those people who doesn't agree with him, he killed them because he's a ruthless conqueror and a tyrant king. He reigns and he destroys everything in his path. You know, um, I remember a story uh, I heard a while back. There was a man who had a bloody shirt, bloody hands. He went to the church, to the confession booth of the priest. And so the priest saw him. So, yes, my son, what can I do for you? So the man said, Father, I killed the man. The priest said, why? Can you tell me what happened? And the man said, you know, uh, Father, my best friend and I started a friendly conversation. Then it became personal and it, it got heated. And I ended killing him because he didn't agree with my belief. So the priest said, why? May I know the root of your argument? So the man said, my friend said that he believed in God. But I said, I don't believe in God. It got, it got heated, so I killed him. How about you, Father? Do you believe in God? So the priest said, Oh, no, not anymore. And the priest said, and the priest ran away. You know, we are so blessed that we live here in Canada, right? We live in a country that we are open to say that Jesus is our Savior. Jesus is our Lord, and that we believe that He is the only way to heaven. Amen? He is our Savior. So, Nimrod's name also appeared in some passages in the Bible. In Micah chapter 5, verse 6, and in 1 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 10. Nimrod is not just a skillful hunter, but also a kingdom builder. As you saw earlier, that he built cities. Right, big cities that you you can read those cities in the latter verses of the Bible. Right, um, people are scared of him maybe because of his physical strength, massive physical appearance, and some scholars also believe that he is a he 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 is a giant. He's part Nephilim, so that's that's according to the to the uh, some scholars, right? So that's why. That's why people are scared of him, not only because of physical appearance, but if you don't agree with him, he, you will be killed. And many scholars also believe 
that he is the one responsible for building the Tower of Babel. He is the leader of the Tower. He was the king during that time. One Jewish historian named Flavius Josephus wrote in his book, Nimrod said he would be revenged on God. If, you sh if he should have mined, drowned the world again, for that he would build a tower too high for the waters to reach, and that he would avenge himself on God for destroying their forefathers. Taken from Antiquities of Jews, Book 1, Chapter 4. Nimrod knows that God destroyed earth. That why he rebel against God. You know, Nimrod and the people didn't get the memo from God, right? When God said, I will not destroy the earth anymore with flood. But Nimrod did not listen, right? He still built this city. He waterproofed it so that all the people will be see, uh, safe during this flood. Remember when they, they put bricks, mortar, tar? Because during this time, Shem, Noah was still alive during the Tower of Babel. So maybe they went to their ancestors. Maybe, Grandpa, how did you make the, the boat uh, um, waterproof? Oh, this is what we did. So maybe that's what they did, right? Because Shem was still alive. Noah was still, still alive during this time. So that's why Nimrod, the king of Babel, is so... Um, is so fearsome that all people is afraid of him. That's why he constructed the Tower of Babel. So let's continue. In, in Genesis chapter 10, verses 13 to 20, the genealogy of Ham. So you can see Ham. These are his kids. Actually, these are all men. So the, the wives are not being mentioned here. So these are Cush, Mizraim, Mizraim or Egypt, Put, Canaan, and these are their kids. See then? Sorry, I forgot to, to count them. So no, Nimrod, here. So there's a lot from that generation of Ham. And these people went to the coast of Africa. So this is the line of Africa. But of course, not only Africa, they also went to uh, some other places. And in Genesis 21 to 31, just after this, is the genealogy of Shem. So Shem, Elam, Ashur, Arphaxad, Lud, and Aram. So these are his descendants. So in the Bible, I, I'm just, uh, I didn't put the, uh, the year here. So hundreds of years, thousands of years uh, for this generation. Remember, my generation is only 99 years, but it's already 300 people, right? Imagine this, how many, from this generation, maybe another 300 people, 300, so, so people really populate. People became so many that they stayed together. And next, In Genesis chapter 10, verse 32, says, These are the families of the sons of Noah after their generations. In their nations, and by this, were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. So Shem, Ham, and Japheth was earlier. And I'm happy that we're done with part one. G Genesis chapter 10. Now we're going to Genesis chapter 11. Yep. Are you still there? Amen. So Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 to 4. Now all the earth used the same language and the same words. And it came about as they journeyed east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar or Shinar and settled there. Then they said to one another, Come, let's make bricks and fire them thoroughly. And they used brick for stone and they used tar for mortar. 
And they said, come, let's build ourselves a city and a tower whose top will reach into heavens. And let's make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered abroad over the face of all the earth. Do you have any idea what Tower of Babel looks like? I'm sure you, you watch a movie about Tower of Babel. You, you have Google. You Google it. And there's a picture when you were younger, right? They were like your Bible stories. This is not the Tower of Babel, right? <laughs> it's a Tower of Wood. So uh, I'm sure it doesn't look like this. Okay. The Tower of Babel may be look like this, right? Bricks and stones. Now, this is the start of the rebellion of men against God. They disobey this instruction. Just like what God said in uh, Genesis chapter 9, verse 1. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruit fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. You know, um, as you see here, and God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. God is not only talking to Noah. God is also talking to the sons, Noah and his sons, and said to them, right? So the instruction was not given only to Noah, but also to his sons. Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. But the people, their descendants, they don't want to go anywhere, right? Just like what we read in chapter in 4, 11.4. 4. They don't want to go anywhere. They have decided to build their own city. Just one city. In the city of Shinar. And the city of Shinar, you know, they went to a plain. If they want to go to the heaven, they should have built their, their city above the plains, right? So still, they, they didn't get the memo, right? So, so the people want to make a name for them themselves, right? Because they don't trust God anymore. They don't want to depend on God anymore because for them, life is so easy. We understand each other. Uh, life is so cool. Why, why we need God? Why we depend on God? We have a leader. He said we, he can build a city for us. All of us, all the clans will be together. And all of us will, we, with only one language, we understand each other. We don't need God anymore. We don't need his presence anymore. Let's just be one. And that's what the people are doing during that time. Imagine this. Wherever you go, right? Wherever you go, the people you, who, who, the people you meet, in the street, in your school, in your workplace, whites, blacks, Latinos, Asians, Ilocanos, right? Only one language, right? Only one language. Imagine Justin Trudeau will come to you. Oh, kumusta? Taba mo ngayon, right? Only, only one language. All, I'm sorry for, for that Tagalog. So, like, only one language for them, right? So everybody, same thing, same thought. Then God said, this is not what I instructed you. God said, enough is enough. So in Genesis chapter 11, 5 to 9. Now the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the men had built. And the Lord said, behold, they are one people, and they all have the same language. And this is what they have started to do. And now nothing which they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us. Remember the, in Genesis chapter 1, right? Let us make man in our own image. So this, it's the same here. Come, let us. The Trinity. Go down 
and there confuse their language so that they will not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they stopped building the city. Therefore, it was named Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there, the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. Now, new language was formed this time. God could confuse their language so that his instruction will be fulfilled. No more flood, just like what he promised. The people didn't get that, right? They still continue what they believe that flood will happen again. So we have to build something that will protect us. But they didn't know that God is already the protector. And God said that I will not send flood anymore. I remember my kids when I uh, when they were younger, uh, when I told them this story, I told them that this is the only time where angels were laughing so hard in the heavens when God confused the language of the people, right? Because um, uh, they cannot understand one another. So I guess all of us can relate how those people in Babel uh, uh, felt when they cannot understand each other, right? For example, you are in the subway when you are in between those people that you cannot understand. You're in between and they talk their own language. Like you're lost in translation, literally, right? What are they saying? Like you, you move to another, to another uh, seat, right? Or even at work. Some people speak their own dialects, right? And uh, sorry for Ilocanos when I said Ilocanos because I don't understand Ilocano. That's why when the Ilocano speak, when Cebuano speak, I'm lost in translation. I don't understand a, a word. Yeah. So that's why 100% I'm sure that's what people in uh, Babel feels, right? They don't understand even their, their, their friend. They cannot understand. So that is the time when God scattered them uh, uh, all over the place. They went abroad. So the Lord scattered them from there over all the earth. And they stopped building the city. That is why it was called Babel. Because there, the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there, the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. And as we continue in 1126, 11, 10 to 26, Moses, who was the writer of Genesis, repeated the genealogy of Shem in a more detailed fashion. But first we did, these are the records of the uh, generations of Shem. Shem was a hundred years old when he fathered Arpachshad, two years after the flood, and Shem lived 500 years after he fathered Arpachshad, and he fathered other sons and daughters. Arpachshad lived 35 years and fathered Shelah. And Arpachshad lived 403 years after he fathered Shelah. And he fathered other sons and daughters. Shelah lived 30 years and fathered Eber. Okay. So, Shelah is a man. This is Eber. Okay. This is not Ebet. Huh? Yeah. Okay. This is Ebet is not alive yet, yet uh, during that time. And Shela lived 403 years after he fathered Eber, or Eber, Eber. And he fathered other sons and daughters. Eber lives 34 years and fathered Peleg. And Eber lived 430 years after he fathered Peleg. Did I how old? 403 years after he fathered Peleg. And he fathered other sons and daughters. Now, Shem's genealogy is the beginning of the chosen people. That's why Moses um, wrote again his uh, genealogy. From this line came Abram. And um, from Abram, from Noah to, to, from Shem to Abram, it's ten generations. And scholars um, and, and scholars uh, compared it to Noah, from Adam 
to Noah is another 10 generations. And this is the clan where the Israeli people came from. From the clan of Shem. In Genesis chapter 11, 27 to 32, the birth of Abram. Peleg lived 30 years and fired Ryux. And Peleg lived 209. Sorry, this is, this, this is the, uh, yeah. Sorry, that's the continuation of that. This is Shem's um, line again, where the Israeli people came from. This is Terah, the father of Abraham. And as you know, Abraham is the father of Isaac, and then Jacob, and his descendants. Remember the 12? So Shem genealogy is really important for them. It's part of their history. And Abraham was born from the time his father was Terah. Terah took his son Abram, his grandson Lot, son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, the wife of his son Abram. And together, they set out from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. Terah lived 205 years, and he died in Haran. So this is the saddest part of the Bible where... where a Bible chapter has a death. Terah lived 205 years and he died in Haran. No other uh, chapter in the Bible ended with a death. Only this. So Terah, the father of Abraham, died when he was 205 years old. Then the birth of Abraham as well, as we all know, he is the man whom faith was tested by God. He became the father of many nations. And that will be uh, our next topic, um, chapter 11, uh, chapter 12. And um, that's it. So as we close, as we close, um, we should always remember why God confused the people in Babel. Firstly, they disobeyed God. They didn't obey him. They said it in one place. Second, they think that they don't need him anymore, right? When things are working perfectly for them, we don't need God anymore. We will not obey him, and we don't need anymore. Friends, we all need God. We all need to depend on him. Man, just like what Proverbs 3, 5 to 6 said, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. God's ways is perfect, and our job is to trust him, listen to him, and obey. Put God first in everything, especially in our decisions. Let us include God in our life all the time. Amen? So uh, let us pray. Almighty Father, Lord, we thank you for uh, this morning, O Lord God, as we celebrate your victory, O Jesus, that we are... Uh, are, that we are so free to say that you are Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. You are here and you are our Savior. Lord, thank you for dying in the cross for us and resurrected so that people will know that you have the power to save us. Thank you, Jesus, for this time. And thank you, Lord, that we were able to know and to love you. And we can declare that Jesus is Lord in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen.